Besides, White House doubling down on Biden's trans day of visibility message, which shocked nearly, I think, a little over half of 50 percent of the nation here to, uh, because of obviously Catholics, Christians. The White House has doubled down on honoring Transgender Day of Visibility on Easter after sparking a firestorm of criticism from conservative lawmakers on Sunday. White House spokesman Andrew Bates penned a statement addressing the backlash as a Christian who celebrates Easter with family. President Biden stands for bringing people together and upholding the dignity and freedoms of every American, Bates said. Sadly, it's unsurprising politicians are seeking to divide and weaken our country with cruel, hateful, and dishonest rhetoric. President Biden will never abuse his faith for political purposes or for profit. March 31st will be designated to honor the transgender movement internationally since 2009. However, this year it coincides with the celebration of Easter. Rob, if you can pull up the uh, Instagram for the White House. Which one is this, by the way, what you have here, Rob? That was Biden being asked about it yesterday. Oh, can you pull this up? And then Biden was asked about it yesterday, and this was his response. Go for it. Mr. President, what does does Easter mean to you, sir? Sir, what does Easter mean to you? Time for forgiveness and people getting together. No love, no phonies. Be straight with you. And Mr. Speaker Johnson the other day said you, sir, Speaker Johnson said you betrayed the tenet of Easter by proclaiming Sunday, Easter Sunday as Transgender Day. He called it outrageous and abhorrent. What do you say to Speaker Johnson? He's thoroughly uninformed. Uninformed how? I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I think he has a valuetainment hat on, by the way. <laughs> Let's see. Does he? If he Which does, dude, listen. I mean, that. Dude, that was a VC. I don't know. I like his style. I like his style. I think on the bottom yeah. I see it says future looks bright. That's right. Maybe not his. Yeah. I don't know about Ooh. his future looking bright. Man, he's got a, he's got a oh. couple more years left. But look, I mean, half the country wants this guy as a president, you know, uh, uh, that, that will most likely be voting for this guy. 47% of it, whatever the percentage is. So here's a post. Today we sent a message to all transgender Americans. You are loved. You are heard. And you, underst- you are understood. Uh, you belong. President Biden, quote, right? And then if you go to their Instagram account, Rob, the post right before this, three hours p- before that was Happy Easter. So let's read that one. It's just Happy Easter, okay? Nothing more, nothing less, just Happy Easter. But when it comes down to transgender, go to it. Let me read it one more time, okay? Today, we send a message to all transgender Americans. You are loved. You are heard. You are understood. You belong President Biden. He didn't say, today, the day of resurrection to all the Christians and Catholics of our country. I want to take this moment to nothing like that. What are, you, what are your thoughts on this, Chris? So we know he's a devout Catholic, right? Mm-hmm. That's he- what we're told. Yeah. Right. The headline is, the reaction is the reality. You had an extraordinary number of people who felt that this was done the wrong way. Not to paint those people who are upset as being anti-trans. Tolerance is fine, of course, especially on Easter. It's part of the idea of renewal um, and rebirth. But clearly, he stepped on people's expectations of what the Holy Day was about. Mm -hmm. And they were upset. And as a leader, you have to meet people where you find them. And if they're upset at the way you treated this, You have to think about it. And they didn't. Instead, they said, no, you're wrong to feel that way. We didn't do that. I had James Carville on my show say those people are stupid. If that's what they think he was doing, they're stupid, which I felt was a couple more steps down the deplorables Mm -hmm. road. And I said, well, you they're stupid because they feel that this is supposed to be about them and you made it about a different group. And he said, yeah, that's stupid. And I think it's a very big mistake uh, for the president to alienate people for no good reason. And by the way, he didn't help the trans community. You don't help uh, a minority community by setting them up as opposition to a majority community. And it was done in bad taste. It was done the wrong way. And they failed the major lesson of leadership, which is when you make a mistake, correct it, own it and correct it. That's all he had to do here. And it would have been very in the keeping with the season, by the way, of rebirth and renewal and getting it right. And he didn't. Is this a clip? Yeah. Rob, Rob, play this clip. Of the highest or lowest, depending on your point of view, level. Chris? James, what do you think about this? Uh, uh, Well, I honestly think it's profoundly stupid. As if Biden even knew it was Transgender Awareness Day. By the way, Biden goes to Mass and Communion every week, as you well know. 
You couldn't find trumping him out of a church anywhere. This, I, I really think this is utterly absurd. I don't think anybody in the White House was was aware of this, as you point <laughs> out. It's a, it's a, it's a constant day. It's a okay. March thirty first. No problem. I don't know anywhere in Trump's body. You can pause it right there. You can pause. So I don't think anybody in the White House was aware of this, and this is stupid. Perfect. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. We're at UFC, you and I, and we're in the back with Dana White. Dana White introduces us to the uh, what do you call it? To the CEO of Anheuser Busch. Tom, I'm looking at you, mm-hmm. right? To the CEO of Anheuser Busch. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. In Las Vegas. It was in Las Vegas, I said. And this was at the thick of things. Like the announcement hasn't been made that UFC is partnering with partnering with them and dropping their old beer company. <clears throat> and then I asked the guy a question. I said, "Let me ask you: when a when a marketing campaign like this happens, with somebody from your VP of marketing sending a package of Bud Light with Dylan Mulvaney on it to Dylan Mulvaney, does that go through you? Does this your, does your CMO more approve it? Would it go through? Who does it go through? And then it's like, well, you know, it's kind of like this, and he didn't really fully answer. The vibe I got is that it didn't go through him, okay? That the decision was made, and maybe the buck stopped at the CMO, and then they sent him that, and obviously the company lost God knows how much money. And then the other day, we're with Bill, was it Billy Bush? Yeah, we ran into Billy Bush, who had been on the podcast, talked about his book. There he talked right. about the so family. We, we talked to Billy Bush, and Billy Bush, I said, so, Billy, we talked to the CEO, uh, uh, Anheuser-Busch, and here's what he said. He said, it's funny because that would have never happened back in the days. Every major marketing campaign would have to go through us. So here's a question for everybody here. And Rob, can we run a poll on this? The poll is the following. Do you think President Biden knew this was happening? Meaning, was this some administration thing managing the Instagram account that they posted this without asking the president? Or do you think president knew this was going to be posted and said on Easter, a couple hours afterwards, and that Easter message is, happy Easter, two words, and transgender is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20 words versus two words. Me personally, I yeah. don't think he has, this is going all the way back, he is making zero decisions. I know yesterday we talked about it, Mo, but it was kind of like, of course he does. I personally don't think he makes any decisions. What's, what's really happening, let's be honest, Mission accomplished from the White House, okay? If th- this, these are their goals. They want to further divide Americans. Because think about it. Everybody, the whole day, whoever I ran into was like, it wasn't, hey, happy Easter. How you doing, Vinny? God bless you. It was, can you believe what they mission accomplished? They got everybody pissed off. They're taking, think about it, the focus away from the day was Jesus Christ came out of the tomb. He was resurrected. That's what the day was about, okay? And this goes to show you more. They never mentioned Jesus. They never mentioned the resurrection. And it's just their way of taking God. Remember when I but first... But the question called? is, is it by... Do you think it's Biden or is it White House? Why? What, the, the, remember the they that he talks yeah. about? It's them. It's not him. He, he's not a disciple. Tom, what do you think? Yeah, you know, well, first of all, there, I, I see three angles on this. The first angle I see is is a week ago, the first lady was was speaking into the microphone about PETA, and it was going to be a potato roll, not an Easter egg roll on the lawn. So it seemed like the Bidens were pretty clued in that there were different Easter traditions being invoked here. So it seemed like the president and the first lady knew, number one. Number two, I think he absolutely knew it because this is a flag carrier moment for what they've been doing for LGBTQ XYZ R O five one nine, All of that, what they've been doing. It's a flag carrier moment. But what was very interesting to me is when he's walking there on the walk along where the reporters were there on the clip, that wasn't 20 reporters yelling at the president. Maybe there were four questions there. Everybody sort of was a little, the din went down and it was a very clear voice. The president clearly turned to the voice and was answering the direct question and said, no, I didn't do that. So either he's confused or he's denying it. So on that that kind of shocked me because it led me to believe maybe Biden didn't know about it, but how did they not know about it? Because they've been talking about it Do for a week. you think he knew about it? Here's what I think. Before we started the show, we're dealing with a transmission issue. Mm-hmm. You asked like 11 questions. Mm-hmm. You have nothing to do with the transmission of this broadcast, mm-hmm. but it's your company. Mm-hmm. This is the president of the United States. The idea that something like this is going to happen and it's okay that he was clueless is unacceptable. Even if this was done without him, which I doubt, okay? Vinny and I talk about this. I believe the president is plugged in. I talk to people around him. They say they interface with him all the time. They have no reason to lie to me. 
But even if you assume he didn't know, that's worse. Yeah. This was a big deal. It mm -hmm. matters. And now he's in a hole about something that matters to Americans. And at some point, what is a leader? What is a leader? How many times are you going to give a guy who's supposed to be in control a pass because he's not into it, but then you don't want to make his competence an issue? This was an easy situation to rectify. It should have never happened this way. And it, all they did was hurt. They hurt the transgender community. They hurt the faith-based community. And they hurt impressions of his leadership. So, Thank you. So, by the way, what a, what a great take. Rob, I'm going to text you. Can you go to Twitter for me, please? Thank you, Vinny. So, so this guy... This guy is one thing, okay? President Biden. We can debate the 50-50. And if you can, Rob, just go to, yeah, there you go. If you can just go to my profile and uh, uh, right there, it just popped up. Boom. Uh, go to the third tweet. Keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. Go one more right there. Go a little low, Rob. Not that one. I think it's the Alex Soros one. So zoom in on Alex Soros's tweet and just focus on his. Yeah. Okay. So Trans Day of Visibility honors the bravery and resilience of trans communities. Let's stand in solidarity and work to create a world where everyone feels safe and accepted, continuing our fight for the rights of all individuals. Now, this guy is a billionaire now. He's the son of George Soros. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's going to be somebody going to be dealing with for probably 60 years because he's in his late 30s. And nowadays with medicine, he's going to live 50, 60 years. Can you actually go on the tweet, Rob, that he posted and go to the comment section? Go below. Let's see what people are saying. Let's see how many people agree with him. Yeah. Look, Soros, here's one. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Get get right with uh, Jesus, Alex. Okay, keep going. Okay, keep going. That's an ad. So Christ is king. The world Racist. would be a much better place if your entire clan were to be apprehended and prosecuted. Okay, keep going. Nice. This message brought to you by an architect of a regime devoted to... Um, look for one positive message. You're not. That's all I'm You're looking for. You're not. George Soros' son congratulates Muslims on their holiday before Christian holiday. He congratulates transgenders. Look at that. 310, 24, Ramadan Kareem to all those who will begin observing tonight. God didn't make trans people celebrate tomorrow on April Fool's Day. It's more appropriate. The entire Soros family are sponsored. <laughs> so by the way, by the way, you see these posts. Yes. There is not one person that's agreeing with them. So now go back to my post on what I said to him, Rob. Can you go back to the top and just zoom in? And this is what I said. I said, Alex, you are not dumb. Just look through the comments. Not one sane person supports your tweet. So you're either trying to piss off conservatives on Easter trying to incite the next George Floyd type incident, violence, or something darker, which is it, right? Now, this guy knows exactly what he's doing. What I want to ask is what do you think they're doing? Hmm. So what, what is, because on one end, you're like, I can't believe they said this. I can't believe this. And Tom's like, they're trying to get uh, Trump to be emotional because the more emotional he is, the less he talks about policies. It's kind of like what you said. Right? Exactly Tennessee, what I said. Right? That's a good point. But <clears throat> what, else, what else do you think Alex is doing this for? What, what is he doing it for? You really think he woke up saying, let me congratulate the 0.01% of America, yet let me leave the 55% of America alone and not congratulate them. Strategically, what do you think is his outcome of that post? Strategically. I think it's about ignoring more than it is about empowering. So I think that on the left end of the political spectrum, there is an exaggeration of importance of minority-based issues. And sometimes that's good because minorities need attention because they're being overshadowed. But this is a case where trans awareness, tolerance becomes more important than the majority aspect of the occasion. So on the left, they're more interested in motivating the trans movement than they are giving a nod to Christians. Not that they're anti-Christian, but that their mind is on the trans issue. That's part of their agenda. Christianity is not part of their agenda. Motivating Christians, speaking to Christians, speaking to devoutly religious people is not part of their agenda. It's not their base. So their head is on their base. This is politics, Pat, more than anything else. I don't know, Alex. I wouldn't even have known he was Soros' kid. Uh, I think the Soros stuff is a little overblown, but it doesn't matter. Um, their agenda is to play to the base. People who are sympathetic to the trans cause, which I have no problem with as a function of tolerance, 
but they're not seeing it through your lens. Your lens is this is a Christian holiday. Why would you start anywhere else? Because you don't care about the Christian holiday. That's why you just get happy Easter. And by the way, Easter is the weakest word for the occasion. It's a pagan word that has to do with Estrus, the goddess of spring, a pagan goddess. Mm. Rebirth, renewal, resurrection, he is risen. That's what Easter is for anybody who cares, okay? Easter is just a word. They don't focus on that. They care about the other agenda. And that's what motivates a lot of their decision-making process. Is the agenda a noble agenda or is the agenda a strategic agenda? Depends who it is. Because on the political side, it's very strategic. Yeah. Because look, think about it. They're setting these people up, trans and their allies, to be hated. You're putting them in opposition to the biggest religious holiday for Christians. How are you helping them by doing that? If you care about them, why would you do that? It's like raising a Jets flag at a Patriots right. game. Yeah. Why so would you do that? And speaking, you, speaking of being hated, this is, and this is speaking as someone who's Jewish, I'm not celebrating Easter, but I know you guys were. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the single most holy day it is. in the Christian faith. Imagine if they started saying, hey, by the way, today's Easter. Yeah. Uh, but don't forget, Passover's coming. Let's give a little love. Passover's on its way. You'd be yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we're, we're so if, don't, if, don't bring me up on this. You know what I mean? Goal, this isn't my day. If the whole goal of this transgender visibility day, like it's not just transgender day, visibility, it's to be seen and heard and appreciated. We see you. This is the antithesis of helping these people. Out. Yeah. This will only make people hate you more and not want to see you. You're conflicting with God. Yep. And not the thing. And then when it comes it. to when it comes to Trump and politics, one million percent this is playing to the base. Um, the most ironic thing here is Biden, who I, correct me if I'm wrong, is Catholic and apparently goes to mass every Sunday. His base is the DEI woke agenda females, liberals. Trump. Who, Which is not the Catholic base, by the way. You could argue whether it should be, but Catholics do not align politically. They are a conservative No, that's group. my point. Biden is, but not his base. Trump, you could argue, is not the most religious guy. I think he'd prefer to be playing golf on Sunday than being in church. But his base is the evangelical base. So, you know, you talked about your question on, on your show, who won the weekend? Without a doubt, Trump won the weekend. Trump, as you can say a million different things bad about the guy, he's the guy that's defending Christianity now. He won it with funeral Biden, versus fundraising. Exactly. Yeah, big time. So, it, and, then, you know, the, the, the thing, I mean, just to kind of give a little context here, Transgender Day of Visibility happens on March 31st. Nobody knew that. Um, Easter changes every year. So if you follow any of the Jewish holidays, dude, I never know what day is what, what day is what. We know Christmas, December 25th, boom, book it, right? Every year, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah is a different day, different week. We have no clue. Easter, technically, it's called a movable feast. So it falls on the first Sunday after the full moon, which occurs after the spring equinox. Good luck remembering that. But same for Ash Wednesday, same for Good Friday, same for Bald Sunday. So this is just horrible, horrible timing for Biden in an election year. Last time this happened was 2013. But, but the, you know, to go back to the Soros side, the reason why the Soros comment is a little weird, and I said, and I know you're kind of like, well, some people think of Soros, whatever. You ever read his article on L.A. Times, the interview he did? No. What he told L.A. Times? Can you pull up the article I just sent you, Rob? This is an interview. Go a little lower. So this at, all the way at the top. This is LATimes.com. George Soros, the God who carries around some dangerous demons. Go a little lower, and I want you to go to the middle of it. Uh, fancies. Search the word fancies. Oh, right there. Right there. Right there. You just had it. Uh, you just had it wherever you were at. Oh, you just moved it. Oh. Uh, fancy. Right there. It seemed that Soros believes he was anointed by God. I fancied myself as some kind of a God, he once wrote. If truth be known, I carried some rather potent... My, uh, messianic fantasies with me from my childhood, which I felt I had to control. Otherwise, they might get me in trouble. He continues, it is a sort of a disease when you consider yourself some kind of a God, the creator of everything. But I feel comfortable about it now since I began to live it out. Hmm. That's the father. 
So this is why people are worried about Soros. This is a very strange guy. <laughs> if you've never seen the documentary about this guy, highly recommend you watch and, it. And mind you, this is his son. Uh, what's his son's name? Alex. He's Alex taking Soros, over the company. His, George Soros well, is let's not forget, older and unhealthier not, than Biden. Well, first and foremost, let's not forget, it's election year. Everything happens, especially at this level, for a reason. What did Elon Musk say about uh, George Soros? He hates humanity. For somebody like that, that's pretty smart, we could all agree. He says he hates uh, humanity. And let's think about it, guys. This is the trans visibility day. Trans falls under the umbrella of, what'd you say, Tom? LGBTQ2A plus elemental people, whatever, all that stuff. Look at how perfect is what they're doing. They're angering the Christians against them. So imagine mm -hmm. now, imagine for, for this week, how much hate that community is going to get. And what have we been seeing in the past two years, Pat? How many mass shootings have right. these LGBTQ communities Everything is on purpose. Everything that they're doing, and you nailed it, Mo. That's exactly what they're doing. You just pissed off the Christian base, which now they're going to start talking shit and going after but them. But they, they didn't do this, though. This was done to them. To them. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Correct. But, but going back but, to the but that's perfect what, plot. This started with Obama in 2009. Right. Yeah. Okay, Great so this threat. isn't but this, horrible timing. But this is. But the point about this is the deceptive side. The deceptive side. Yeah. You know, all you had to do was wait just wait a few days and give love to Christians and give them their message, a nice message to them, respectful about it. But you were the way you did it. It's very obvious you're playing the game. No problem. Mm -hmm. Now, the average individual who's an independent voter, because your vote's what matters the most, the independent, the libertarian voter who is paying very close attention, pay close attention. You're probably the only vote that matters in America today. Right's going to vote right. Left's going to vote uh, left. The middle, watch the gamification taking place. So when events take place and there's a shooting at a trans event and something happens mm -hmm. and then they turn that into the next George Floyd and there's ceremonies and protesting and riots going on, remember when the agitation started on Easter. Just keep that part of mind. Let's go to the amount of traffic we're getting right now with Manect is unbelievable. Yesterday, I can't even tell you how many Manects came through yesterday for me. Great conversations. People booking 15-minute calls. Tom is about to cross 2,000 Manects. Okay, he'll be the first person to have 2,000 paid Manects uh, uh, there. I know Chris uh, is probably one of the fastest to respond on Manek. I think he's a 24-hour guy at 100% response back to answer. So if you have any questions today, if you disagree with me or agree with Tom or Vinny or Adam or Como, these are their QR codes, ask him any question you want on Manek. There's a 95% chance you get a respond back. On Instagram, you get respond backs 5%. On LinkedIn, 5%. On Twitter, less than 10%. On Manect, there's a 90 to a 95% chance they're going to get back to you. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.